Couldn't be. Now, I came across this piece written by Ganun Dia. What's the headline here, friends? Friends, this is going to be a very serious segment. It says, call to unity for the sake of mission. So we can lay aside our distinctive doctrines for the sake of what? Mission. But mission to whom and for whom? You cannot proselytize among the, the lines of denominations. Just work for the unchurched. And that's why you see why uh, the Great Hope was written also. Not to bring that back in, but I mean, that's a part of our you mission. Is, yes, that's a part of our mission as Seventh day Adventists yes. to scatter those books like the leaves of autumn, yes. which contains the protest, the history, the origin, the Protestant Reformation. Do a word search on the word protest, Protestantism, Reformers, Reformation in the original Great Controversy, approximately 700 pages. And contrast that with the great hope, and you'll see something amazing. Look at this here. This is Gunundia. He says this. Look how he's promoting ecumenism. He says, one of the areas, and there's your URL right there. One of the areas, however, with a track record of Christianity has not been outstanding, is partnership among Christians to fulfill the what, my friends? The Great Commission, how? Together, pause right there. So what is Ganun Diop saying? In order to fulfill the Great Commission, what must we do? We must form an ecumenical alliance. Where is that in scripture? Nowhere to be found. What mission did God give to Seventh-day Adventists and say, in order for us to accomplish this, we must unite with fallen Babylon. How could this be? Couldn't when be. our very mission also to out. is to call free people from Babylon, but if you form an ecumenical alliance with Babylon, what are you doing? You are building up Babylon. That's right. Let's move on here. Wow. Read on here. The last point there. What he says today, however. Today, however, the prospects of new partnerships are promising. Promising. A compelling case can be made that new forms, listen to this, a compelling case can be made that what, my friends? That new forms of partnerships are needed on a what scale? So what is he calling for then? A global one world religion to fulfill the Great Commission. Wow. Wait a minute. Where can we find two specific places we find the Great Commission? Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 28 verse 18. 18 through verse 20. And where else? Matthew Revelation 14. chapter 14, verse 6 through verse number 12. We're in. Go to the book of Ezra with me. Go there with me. Where are we going to, friends? The book of Ezra. Ezra. Oh, friends. Ezra chapter 4. Go there with me. Ezra chapter 4. This is when they were building up the temple, building the walls carrying out the mission of Isaiah chapter 58. And when, look at verse 1. Are we there, my friends? Verse 1, Hillary, verse 1 says what now? Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. Pause right there, Hillary. Who is the primary human entity that is an adversary to the Protestant Reformation. Who is it? Roman Catholicism. So how then can we unite in an ecumenical alliance with Pope to carry forward the Gospel Commission? Look at verse number 2. Hillary, go ahead. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of what did the uh, friends listen to me over here father in heaven please dear god give us understanding in christ's name verse number one and verse two these were the adversaries of god's people god's message god's work what did they say to god's end time builders that we god's faithful god. builders we seek it 
Your God is the same Jesus. It's our God. Wow. Have mercy. Oh, you're seeing it now. And what did Pope Francis say in the presence of Ganun Diop at the Ecumenical Alliance, right. October 12, 2016? Your God is my, no, no, no. It's not my Your Jesus, Jesus yeah. is my Jesus. We all say, uh, serve the same Jesus. So now we can unite in the three facets of ecumenism, prayer, Mission, Mission and, blood. and ecumenism of blood. Wow. Wake up, my friends. That what more can be said? Mm. What more can be said? What did God's faithful builder say now? Verse number three, but Zerubbabel, Hillary, and Jeshua. And the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. He didn't say, you know, all of our God, our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Always seeing this now, my friends. What if I said to you that Ganun Diab, as he joined in this ecumenical alliance, bringing Seventh day Adventists in this ecumenical alliance, going against scripture, the word of God, what if I told you that he quoted? from Pope Benedict XVI justifying ecumenism. Would you believe me? Look at this, the same article, Call to Unity for the Sake of Mission. It says this, the reality of Christian unity is a fulfillment of Christ's prayer, said Ganundia, John 17. That connects, let's read, that connects Trinitarian mercy. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. That connects Trinitarian love with ecclesiology and mission, he said. For the sake of the world, Christ commissions his church to reach out to all people with the gospel of love. But now, since they have formed an ecumenical alliance, who is he called in Christ's church? All of the all of the churches represented, including popery. Even the papacy. Wow. This is treason. Mm -hmm. And we are told in the book Last Day Events, page 180, volume 5, testimonies, page 136, that when the religion of Christ is held in its most contempt, when its laws are the most despised, then should our zeal be the firmest our courage the most unflinching to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few this will be our test at this time we must gather warmth from the coldness of others courage from their cowardice and loyalty from their treason Volume 5, Testimonies 136. Look okay. at this. Pastor, can I yes. just say this? Sure. The first sentence sounds a lot like Tony Palmer because John, when he gave, John yeah, 17. he gave his speech. He said, you know, that we here today that are gathered, we are all fulfilling John 17. And he's speaking the same language as these ecumenicists. Look at this. Reading on from, from Ganun Dia, called to unity for the sake of mission. And this was written after 2014 now he says this watch for christianity its message for christianity quote who is he quoting here quote its message is a locus of god's unique revelation he says watch carefully it claims to give expression to god's message which raises men to his highest dignity, goodness, and beauty, according to whom? To Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth. Who is he quoting from? Wow. In the context of call to unity for the sake of mission, who is he quoting from? He's quoting from Pope. Now, no wonder. It's no big thing. No, no, no great thing for Seventh-day Adventists to quote 
from infidels, mm. Roman Catholic monks. Y'all are right. shaking your head. You know where I'm going now, right? Yep. Quoting from Jesuits in their Sabbath school lesson guide. Correct. Now you can see it. Yep. And we don't know who the Antichrist is. I heard you back there. Joanna, listen because here. They all consider them a part of the body of Christ. That's They're it. all the church. That's so now it. you can borrow from this person and that person and even the Pope himself. But Jesus says, are the sheep I have who are not of this fold. He doesn't call over there his fold. No, he doesn't. They are not of this fold. And he says then also, also I must bring. Bring out that, of Babylon. Oh, friends, you know it. Yes. Read on. Then he quotes him again. Wow. He says, watch. With reference, right here, red words, with reference to, let's read, with reference to the possibility of the what? The coexistence of truths. He, the Pope, adds, quote, he says, what now, friends? It is not the same thing to say that Christ is the Son of God in whom the full presence of the truth about God finds expression. And to say that what? Various kinds of truths are also present in what? Other religions. What is he saying? Wow. Other religions have what, friends? Have truth. Wow. So now, unity for the sake of what? Mission. Then he ends by saying, the last sentence he says, watch carefully. The claim that God is present in Christ and that the true God himself thus appears and speaks to us in him does not rule out that the come on that one friends that the other come on that the one the that religion. the other religions also contain truths but that is just the point truths that as it were point to the truth wow it's an abomination wow. stating the Roman Catholic Church have a system of truth that points to Jesus. Wow. When they point away from Jesus, right. because the Bible calls them the Antichrist. You know something, uh, a while back you had shared a sermon from Alex Bryan, and he, he, you know, he's a member, well, he's a part of the emerging church, and he believes in spiritual formation, etc. And he uh, showed the, these puzzle pieces and he was basically saying yes. that each puzzle piece yes. represents a different denomination. And he said they all uh, make up this grant. When you put them all together, they all have a little piece of the truth, but you can only see the full scope of the truth when you put them all together. Calling for ecumenism. <laughs> That's why this man's writings belong in the trash heap. You know, That's where it belongs. It's an abomination, my friend. This, this uh, idea, though, of unity for the sake of mission is not...